This is the logo for the Insulators Union, the trade group for workers that installs insulation on buildings. Insulation is used for a lot of reasons, but the main one is to prevent heat from moving around. This keeps the building warm in the winter and cooler in the summer. It also cuts down on energy costs. So why does the logo for the Insulators Union look like they're cooking a lizard for dinner? Well, for starters, that's a salamander, not a lizard. Lizards are reptiles that live only on land, but salamanders are amphibians. They crawl on land, but can also swim, and they even have gills to breathe underwater. But the answer to why the Insulators Union has a salamander on its logo actually starts hundreds of years ago, maybe even thousands of years ago, and it has a lot to do with asbestos. Let's rewind this story and figure out the connection between asbestos, insulators, and salamanders. Okay, let's start with asking the question, what exactly are salamanders? Salamanders are a type of amphibian. They look like lizards, but salamanders have moist skin, unlike lizards which have dry skin. Like we said, they can swim and breathe in water, and salamanders are actually more closely related to frogs than to lizards. The most well-known kind of salamander is a newt. All newts are salamanders, but not all salamanders are newts. One type that is not a newt is the European fire salamander. In fact, fire salamanders eat newts for breakfast. Literally. That being said, salamanders aren't exactly the biggest creatures, and they need some way to protect themselves from larger predators. Many salamanders use camouflage with drab colors and markings to hide themselves. But some salamanders, like the fire salamanders, have very bright colors that stick out to predators. And the reason their skin is bright is to serve as a warning to any birds or other creatures that may think about eating them. Because fire salamanders also secrete a poison, but it's actually two different neurotoxins that can be deadly, or at least toxic enough to make you sick. A lot of poisonous frogs and snakes and other animals are brightly colored as a warning. This survival strategy is known as aposematism. So what do European fire salamanders have to do with asbestos? Let's first cover exactly what asbestos is. Asbestos is a name for a group of rocks that have special properties. Probably the most famous one is that asbestos is very fire resistant, and that's where the salamanders come in. Humans have known about the fireproofing properties of asbestos since the Stone Age when it was added to clay pots to make them more heat resistant. The other important property of asbestos rock is that it's made up of little fibers. Asbestos fibers can be spun into thread. You can even use it to make asbestos cloth. That's right, cloth made from a fireproof rock. And in fact, the asbestos cloth is fireproof. You can stick an asbestos tablecloth in the fire, and when you pull it out, it'll be cleaner than before. No wonder that in the Middle Ages, many people thought asbestos was magic. So what about fire salamanders? Well, the reason fire salamanders are called fire salamanders is that a lot of people used to believe that they were resistant to fire. The scientist and inventor Leonardo da Vinci even said that salamanders eat fire. Of course they don't. But why did everybody think this? Historians have a pretty good idea of the reason why. First, fire salamanders are amphibians and need to stay in moist places. So they like to live in old, rotting logs or stacks of wood, the kind that are sometimes used by people to make fires. So many times, people would put an old, rotting tree trunk in the fire, and as the heat and smoke reached inside the wood, the fire salamanders that lived inside came running out, making it look like they lived in the fire, or at least didn't have any problems dealing with it. Another reason is that salamanders are amphibious and can escape into rivers in times of forest fires. Some varieties thrive on the debris-covered ground of a burned forest, so seeing them returning unharmed may have led some people to report that salamanders could not be burned. And in addition, like a lot of amphibians, salamanders are bioluminescent, meaning they emit chemicals that glow in the dark, like fireflies or jellyfish. Seeing glowing salamanders may have convinced some observers that the fireproof legends were real. This belief that salamanders resisted fire goes way back, even to the ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle. Aristotle believed the world was at some level all composed of air, water, earth, and fire. He observed that animals like birds are connected to the air, fish are connected to the water, livestock is connected to the earth, so he theorized there must be some animals that are also connected to fire. He said that salamanders were an example, claiming that they were incapable of being burned since they were in a way made of fire. 
The salamander is actually the symbol of fire in many places, including in the Disney movie Frozen 2. Years later, the ancient Roman naturist named Pliny the Elder wrote an encyclopedia of the natural world and attributed the fire resistance of salamanders to their being cold as ice. Pliny was probably noticing that salamanders are amphibians with cold and clammy skin. Pliny also said that salamanders emitted a toxic white substance. That part he did get right, and it's why fire salamanders have their bright yellow color. Another ancient encyclopedia called the Physiologist, meaning the naturalist, said that if a salamander climbs inside an oven, the fire will go down as the salamander absorbs it. While none of this is true, the idea that salamanders resisted fire was a popular one. King Francois I of France used a crowned salamander as his emblem because the supposedly fire-resistant amphibian represented someone who never lost his cool but was as potent and frightening as fire and poison. So fast forward to the Middle Ages. Science was having a bit of a dark period. Astronomers thought the sun and planets rotated around the Earth, doctors were trying to cure people by draining their blood and applying animal poop, and alchemists were spending their nights trying to turn lead into gold. Okay, maybe that's a bit of an oversimplification, but it is true that medieval scientists really didn't know exactly what to think about asbestos. Advanced mining techniques hadn't been developed, and asbestos cloth was rare. Many people had never actually seen it with their own eyes. But the one thing they knew about asbestos was that it wouldn't burn in fire. They also thought they knew that salamanders wouldn't burn. So it wasn't a far leap for them to decide that asbestos somehow came from salamanders. Many said asbestos was woven of salamander hair, and one name alchemists used for asbestos thread and cloth was salamander wool. In his travels to China, the Italian merchant Marco Polo saw asbestos cloth, which was owned by elites and prized for its fire resistance. He refers to it as a salamander and sets out to debunk the claim that the chilly little amphibians were the origin of asbestos cloth. Polo says a Turkish friend of his explained how asbestos is in fact a rock dug out of the ground and not an animal. The friend clarified that no animal can live in fire. Marco Polo continues and lays out a clear description of asbestos mining and processing. The way they got them was by digging in that mountain till they found a certain vein. The substance of this vein was then taken and crushed, and when so treated, it divides as if it were fibers of wool, which they set forth to dry. When dry, these fibers were pounded in a great copper mortar and then washed so as to remove all the earth and leave only the fibers like fibers of wool. These were then spun and made into napkins. When first made, these napkins are not very white, but by putting them into a fire for a while, they come out as white as snow. And so again, whenever they become dirty, they're bleached by being put back into the fire. Now this and not else is the truth about the salamander, and the people of the country all say the same. Any other accounts of this matter is fabulous nonsense, said Marco Polo. But even as the salamander story became a distant legend, and people began to understand that asbestos is a mineral, the salamander connection stuck. In the 18th century, there were performers known as human salamanders, who would wear asbestos clothing and perform stunts for crowds. For example, the salamanders would carry raw meat into a fire and emerge unburned, holding meat that was now cooked. When the steam revolution began in the mid-19th century, asbestos was a major player. Its heat-resistant qualities made it perfect for insulation for all the boilers and other hot equipment on trains and machines. By the 20th century, asbestos insulation was everywhere, and the workers installing asbestos insulation decided to form a union. Which brings us back to the insulator's union symbol. When it was formed at the turn of the 20th century, asbestos was not widely known to be dangerous, so they chose the historic symbol of asbestos, the salamander untouched by the flames. Thousands of documents show that the asbestos industry knew their product caused health problems, and they even had scientific research showing it could cause cancer, which they failed to follow up on and buried rather than publish or alert the public. It wasn't until injured employees brought lawsuits that the truth came out and the insulators union actually played an important part in getting the truth out about asbestos. Nowadays, the union has removed asbestos from its name and its members include workers who actually remove asbestos from buildings and dispose of it. They also help fireproof buildings in safer ways than asbestos insulation. But their asbestos salamander continues on more than a century later, sitting above a roaring fire and keeping cool under pressure. Thanks for watching this episode of Asbestos Rewind, and if you have any questions about asbestos you'd like answered, 
post them below in the comments.